Hey guys, welcome back to the Go Global World Investor Series. And yeah, guys, this is just, you know, I love doing these, love learning from different perspectives and your guys' feedback has been just invaluable. So a lot of people have been asking about Web3. So guess what? That's exactly what I brought to you guys. But first, just a little bit of housekeeping things and then I'll go through because it's we're coming up on the most patriotic holiday coming up. I know because I got the flag right behind me because this is America and we're fucking winners. So with our app, our our deals are the following. So in investors, we're running a 90% off sale with our software with code investors90. For startups, definitely cannot forget about you guys. With the regular package for all of July, we're running start with the 75% off with code startup75. And if you guys like me, hate me, or you'll see it in my TikTok bio, I have a personal code now for 10% off at any time, Chris Gonzalez 10. So I had to get that plug in there. Not much of a sales guy, but the result speaks for themselves. Okay. Anyway, guys, in this in this episode today, we're going to be going over the what shouldn't be the overcomplicated concept of Web3 and a very cool firm in... Uh, Miami, Florida, because the Heat didn't do much winning, but these guys win all the time. So guys, with that being said, I'm going to be taught the people that are referencing is Krypton Labs. And honestly, I'm just going to let these guys introduce themselves because I don't because I don't feel like that I'm qualified enough to now they even got messy down there. So now like that place is blowing up. But uh, yeah, guys, can you tell me a little bit about Krypton Labs and how this kind of came about? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having us, Chris. And, uh, you know, I, I take I take a little offense to the Heat winning comment. They still were the second best in the league, but, you know, it happens. Uh, yeah, so we started Krypton Labs about a year and a half ago now, um, kind of stemmed out of starting a company ourselves. And so we started almost as a venture studio uh, model and really just saw a lack of funding in the space around Web 2.5. And what I mean to say with that is, how do we use blockchain wallets, cryptocurrency in a manner that doesn't require us to step away from traditional infrastructure, such as like the US dollar? Um, what makes it where you don't have to download multiple apps to get into the ecosystem, et cetera? And we felt that was super important. But when you launch a company in that space, it's very hard to find funding because it's either a crypto native VC who is all in or it's a traditional VC who the moment they hear blockchain and NFTs, they get scared. And so that's kind of where we came from and where we started in the space. After that, we launched an accelerator uh, and then got our toes wet with investing and raising a fund. Awesome. And I'm going to just go ahead and ask the hard question right off the bat, because I feel like, you know, there's there's a lot of things that are complicated in life, but this shouldn't be. And you guys can both chime in, but can you explain Web3 in the most simple phrase Ever, because I feel like people, you know, you've seen all the Reddit threads, even TechCrunch fucks it up and all this other stuff. If you can just give us a quick and low explanation about what it is and like where it's taking society. Yeah, I'll definitely let Benny take this one as the technical co-founder here. <laughs> yeah, I think the simplest way that I can describe it is that Web3 is a version of the Internet that will be different than the current version. That's the simple, the simple explanation. It's something that's different. We don't know what it looks like from that definition. Now, with that in mind, people have characterized Web3 using blockchain, smart contracts, AI um, tend to be the main ones, but also XR and extended reality, um, gaming, IoT, 5G. A lot of emerging technologies fit into that bucket. So within the context that's most often talked about, it is the blockchain and smart contracts that are referred to. So it's the next version of the internet that leverages those technologies. Although at the core, we don't yet know what Web3 is going to be. We just know it's going to be different. Okay, good. Yeah, that that's flawless because a lot of people think we're living in the year 5,000. I'm like, no, we st there's still a lot, a lot of things that we can't do. But from personal experience too, like I'd like to give a Example, like I, I just have an obsession as of recently with the supply chain sector and like a lot of that stuff, like a lot of the $50 trillion industry gets lost in transit because they don't have smart contracts yet or web, they're still using Web2. And that's just like another thing, you know, you use blockchain and those type of things 
and stuff tends to not get lost when we print out a shit ton of paper you know that's just with any process so that's just another example and and uh benny was referencing iot internet of things which that's what it means but that's just like a new that's just a new up and coming sector and like people are trying to say hey what can i use the internet for like stretch the capabilities of it like there's always a popular example in business insider be like hey I want to be able to water my garden with Wi-Fi. Like it's 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 that stuff as as weird as it sounds. So I see you guys are strategically uh it this may just be by coincidence, but strategically located in my uh Miami. Now, when it comes to web three, I'm gonna just kind of flip over to the crypto side. There seems to be a lot of regulation. Uh UAE is the ones that are just dropping the hammer, but now we're trying starting to see other places o- overcome this. The United Kingdom is with government buy-in and the fact that A16E and Sequoia and a few Series B crypto startups are there. Is there like a reason why you picked Miami or did that just become? Yeah. So, I mean, Miami was obviously the hub in America, but I'll, I'll even go a step further and say, if you're investing in a company that can only operate in the UAE, your company is worth less than a million dollars, right? And, and that's the reality of most crypto and Web3 companies. And Hey, I'll even I'll even take a little a little jab at A16Z. Most of their portfolio doesn't have consumers, and so it's great that you're building this crazy technology that can completely usurp governments. But the reality is, most of your user base in a lot of these apps are either for game earn to play gaming kind of stuff. It's people in very impoverished countries for this uh, completely decentralized finance economy. I'll be perfectly honest: the majority of users are doing things to usurp government regulations, control. We see a lot of OGs in the drug trafficking and a lot of people who came from, you know, nefarious purposes, now leaders in crypto. And so I I do think it's kind of this, like, be careful what you wish for an investment. And so for us, we want to invest in things that the largest economy in the world will actually allow inside of it. Okay, yeah. Here's uh, what I found. So... For, I guess, two questions. One, let's just get to the nitty gritty for, I I feel like FTX kind of ruined this for all of us, but when you guys are analyzing startups in this space, like what are KPIs that you guys look for that are exclusive to this sector? Yeah, so in this sector, I I think there's three unique things you would look for. The first and foremost is the technology. Um, more than anything, right? A strong CEO means nothing if you don't have something that's actually unique and capable of doing what you say it will. The second is we look heavily for active wallets. Now, I mean, we're early stage investors. And so some of our companies that we would look to don't even have a product yet, but it's how many daily active users do you have and, and particularly unique users. It's just a different metric for the number of people that download your app. Um, and then the third we don't typically touch this one, but it's token price, token circulations, things like that. Really talking about almost creating a stock option through an, a token offering. Wow. Yeah. And uh, Benny, is there anything to, uh, I know you're more on the technical side. I would love to hear it. E, e, even if I don't understand and even if the audience doesn't understand. Yeah. I think security and usability are the two most important things for the technical side. So they're a little bit on the the edge of technical and business requirements, but we security is really important. It's something that, you know, the innovate fast and break things, yes, but only if you do so, you know, with security in mind, you know, and, and being acknowledging of some of the risks that you're taking. And then also the usability. So sometimes an early stage Web3 product might not have all of the usability features that it needs long-term, um, but at least aligning with the founders on, on, on that understanding that we're going to be, for, for most products within Web3, also incorporating users that are not knowledgeable about wallets. So being prepared for that and overcoming that. Very nice. And I guess the next question I'm going to ask, well, I guess kind of just like a double punch here, but where do you guys see your organization like next fund cycle, five to 10 years? And what sectors are you really trying to punch home in Miami or just anywhere really? But yeah, so I mean, we, we've definitely doubled a bit down on the venture studio model while, while we've been doing this. And so for us, we're trying to build some of the underlying tech that we feel is necessary to, to really start to stem user adoption here. The other side of this is uh, I, I think really it's, it's a, 
it'd be incorrect to not talk about AI or the role that smart city technology will play in all of this. Blockchain is kind of fundamental to combating the dangers of AI in terms of authenticity, knowing what's real, what's fake, and knowing that you're communicating, talking to, and sending stuff into the right places that it's supposed to be. Um, cyber criminals will get a lot smarter with AI. You will see AI dominate politics because every, every uh, fake video that you could possibly imagine is going to happen. And you will see celebrity scandals, sex tapes, every, everything you could imagine will happen with this. So now more than ever, authenticity will be questioned. And that's where we view blockchain as coming in to be the solution to that. Yeah, and I noticed like we've had conversations in the uh, past, and, and guys, just to, so most of my guest guys, the audience I'm talking to, I don't know personally. I actually do know these guys, and they they run a really cool community called the Web Three Collective. I'll put in there. It's like this is cool, right? Now I don't have to sweat and prepare because I, I actually know these guys. But you guys were talking about, you know, you guys are diving into like the government sector and things, and I got a lot of respect for that because a lot of people don't realize the government, military sector, whatever they're they're. They're both the freaking same when you think about it. A lot of people think, you know, the government software hardware is as sophisticated. But the problem with that is, is that even when I was in the military or working with government entities, like they still have to have legacy stuff like Dell, you know, stuff that they can't use Apple because it gets compromised easy. And what's your guys' opinion on like blockchain? Is that going to help? Is that going to help with that curve? Because legacy systems means things move slower. That's what a lot of people don't don't realize. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I, I say this with a bit of a government background myself. I, I always laugh when I hear the CIA created Bitcoin. If the CIA the had Bitcoin, said that? that's one of the most prevailing <laughs> theories around Bitcoin. And it, it's the, I laugh all the time because if the CIA had understood cryptography enough to write Bitcoin, they would be using it heavily throughout the last 20 years for all communications. It will transform DOD supply chains government procurement and all communications and back in back back end infrastructure that the government runs on yeah yeah good and like i'm yeah because all a lot of people including the keyboard warriors get mad on the government on the internet but like they 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 have to have you know that legacy stuff that can't get it apparently dell loves the government because of that but it's because you can't really you know hack into a dell computer that's a that's like a tough book block really that easy and I, I was just doing a podcast with the uh, GovTech fund. They're like the first standalone like government technology fund. And everybody's like, where have these guys been? I'm like, it's kind of hard. But now that you got this implosion of Web3, now it's going to be a little bit easier. So I guess um, I guess we'll flip to the next topic. And this one's just really important to me and a bunch of other people. So in regards to Web3 and founders and especially of the underrepresented minority population, like what one? What's your guys' take on it? Do you think the Web three can be an e it be an equalizer? Me personally, I live in Houston, Texas, and a lot of the accelerators down here, like we're a big music city, and like you see a lot of these artists of like the minority backgrounds, you know, they're able to like have their NFT music startups or Web three music startups, and I'm sure there's a lot of under other industries than just music, but like what what's your guys' take on that? Yeah, I think. It absolutely is. I think the, the larger reason that it is, is because technology is disruptive. For new technology, nobody's an expert, or, right? If it's brand new, then there's very few people that have expertise. And so being like, no matter where you are, you know, and where you are at, you are able to catch up, right? You know, and you are able to be someone with a lot of skill in that category. I also think that the trend of technology is that it is consistently easier to, or less expensive to launch a product and easier to become an entrepreneur. It's still not easy, but it's easier than it was 20 years ago. Um, and I think that Web3 still has that trend within it. Um, I, I might note, I think that uh, there still are some challenges to where Web3 education occurs. Um, I, I've, I've noticed that there's a lot of, hey, within my developer groups, you know, and within my, my technical groups, there's a lot of that. But, um, but sometimes I think when, when answering this question is also important to notice, like, um, like where these things are discussed, you know, the information. And I think, while, while I'm glad that Web3 is very inclusive in the sense that I've, I've always felt anybody can walk in the door, be welcomed, you know, be embraced, be 
you know, can learn and be a part of the community, there's definitely still places where it is not talked about. Yeah, and like Twitter is one of those places where everybody's a fucking expert. Big oh, subscribe to my AI newsletter, my Web3 newsletter. And half of those guys don't even know what any of that stuff is. So, yeah, I mean, I know like you guys have an open source like type of like forum, but like, how do you like, I don't think Web3 is in a place yet where like you can have like an internet database, be like a, like a how to or like a GitHub or anything like that. But like, what are you guys take on it? Do we need more open source um, databases for Web3 or have we just not gotten to the point where we see what it looks like yet? I, I think we do. I think it's, it is probably the, the second part of that where it's we don't know what it looks like yet. Um, a lot of internet technologies that have emerged over the last 30 years um, go, go through a process of originally being private. And then some of them become enormous companies and others get open sourced, right? And become kind of parts of the tech stack that do not you know that you that are not a product, a standalone product in themselves. Um, look at actually Apache is a great example of that, you know, in web frameworks. So I think a lot of the things that are open source, or you know, if we fast forward to what will will be open source and accessible, I think they're they already exist. Some of them are currently being monetized and long term they probably won't be. Others um like are currently open source. And there's a lot that um like a lot that you can find, like Hyperledger is a good example. There's a lot of Web3 technology that is very much open, you know, and very much is um, completely visible and anybody can participate, you know, to the definition of open source. So it's here. There's some of it here. I think we fast forward and we're going to find more, um, in particular, more components that are currently being monetized that from a market perspective will actually produce more value being open source. Yeah, that's good stuff. Cause like even university students, you know, there's like record numbers of even a lot of these bigger funds are starting to target university students because they're a lot smarter than I was and shit like shit. You have some people just, you know, dropping out and like building these massive companies. I'm like, damn, I wish I was smart enough to do that. Um, so in regards to I'm trying to see, I guess I wanna have this last section for AI because there's a lot of bullshit out there, but now that we see, so we kind of have this dynamic and I'm doing a lot of research on this myself. So the boom of AI came right as the economy, you know, kind of came crashing down per se, like in January. So now we're starting to see that AI, like in sources like the Bessemer report and everything A160 drops and all this other info really is improving existing uh, B2B SaaS platforms. Like, I don't know how many I have on my computer, one that builds three statement financial models, one that paraphrases articles and just copy paste on LinkedIn. You know, I think AI applications are fucking great. Yeah, so they're improving portfolio companies of like bigger firms and like not too much disruptive in innovation, just making things faster. But like, I just want to hear like, what do you guys think the future of AI looks like? Yeah. So, so I'll kind of chime in and I say, I say this having ridden the blockchain NFT wave in investment and now being intimate in the AI side, it's, it's really funny to watch these reports come out that are only meant to propagate your own portfolio of investments. Okay. There's, no, there, there's no rhyme or reason to a lot of the stuff coming out from a lot of these major funds uh, in terms of the predictions. Uh, we don't have across most products right now, any AI. Chat GPT is not AI. And really? that, that's kind of what's shocking to most people, but it's machine learning. Chat GPT has the world's largest database. And it then goes and takes that database and creates its best guess through some incredible machine learning algorithms. Don't get me wrong. But nevertheless, that's still all it is, is its best guess. And so that's how you get Chat GPT pulling out court cases that never happen when someone asks it to write a legal review. Why it will tell you two plus two equals five is because someone gave feedback that it's five and that its first prediction of four was wrong. Um, and so I think it's a little challenging because I don't think many investors in this space truly understand the dynamic between machine learning and AI. And I think we get those two confused. There are some revolutionary AI companies coming out that could completely change the game from writing an entire software program for you just by you typing in a prompt. The imagery, the fact that we are, I don't know if you've seen the newest Black Mirror season, but they have a fascinating one where in real time, 
a quote unquote Netflix lookalike is able to mimic a person's life because they gave access on their phone to watching it all. And then she's played by the AI generated version of, of uh, Sama Hayek. And it, it's creepy, but we're close to that. We're getting very close to the point where we will have almost no acting, no film, no TV, no movies created by anything other than CGI, AI, and people's image and likeness. And so I do think that we're at this revolutionary cusp, but I also say is like, we're, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. We're not quite there yet. And as investors, I think a lot of people are investing in like a chat GPT plugin that at the end of the day is going to be worth zero dollars. And so I, I just say to everybody, caution towards the hype. It, it, this is an amazing technology, but unless you have a decade plus experience in machine learning or artificial intelligence programming and, and building, you're, you're probably getting caught in the, we've created APIs that look like this, or we've created outcomes that look like it's AI, but it's really just intelligent machine learning and in, investing in, in, in valuing it at a rate that's five to a hundred X what it should be. Wow. And it's like, yeah, it's like, we didn't see this before, right before the market came down, you know, overinflated valuations. It just, it just seems like everybody jumped on this thing. And I'm like, yeah, they're, they're, this is too good to be true, even on the market map. So out of all that conversation, what you're saying, which has made me really happy is that we're nowhere near the Terminator situation. <laughs> Right. I mean, I just need the confirmation uh, yeah. on that. Yep. Okay, cool. Because <laughs> that, there's a lot of uh, things that's happened in 2023. That's the last thing that I need right now. Uh, I'll, I'll say this is I, I actually take an approach of this. We may be very far away right now, but all it takes is one artificial intelligence model to actually break through on the ability to write and code itself and to be able to start to operate autonomously, which just is about the parameters someone sets. And so I actually get very scared about the concept that before we even realize artificial intelligence is real, we could have artificial intelligence running around on the internet. Because it's very likely that some individual will create a breakthrough using a jailbroken R, chat GPT, et cetera, because unfortunately those codes and code decks have not remained private. Um, and they may not realize, they may be, building something to hack into something, right? And all of a sudden it starts to develop the top of itself. And before we know it, there's an AI building its own AI in real time. So I do think we are close to the point where at any moment it could happen, which is why to me, blockchain, security infrastructure, things like that are so important because we have to create parameters to shut down bad actors across the web servers, et cetera, knowing that AI eventually could, do, could provide that breakthrough. Oh, man. Yeah, that's deep stuff. And knowing that could be like somebody's very smart university student and and all that other bad stuff. And uh, yeah, guys, I'll, I'm gonna wrap this up here. So guys, in the show notes, everything I said in the beginning about our discount sale, but also Krypton Labs website, and they run a very good, they run a very good Telegram community. And you guys still do like once a month, like virtual meetups, right? Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah and guys, yeah. like it's good stuff, because you learn stuff in the beginning, like they had a really good legal presentation a few months ago and like that's the one thing like ip is big in this shit man like it, it could really screw a lot of people over but uh yeah guys thank you for the time today and i really appreciate it